That was a BBC Two continuity announcer, and you'll be able to hear her again in half an hour's time. You might be interested to know that a video is now available in the shops, the best of BBC Two continuity announcements. And now, Hello Mum, live! <laughs> Good morning, Helen. Good morning, Clive. What are you doing? Just brushing my teeth. Well, I'll just have a quick shave then. Careful you don't chop your arm off. <laughs> Oops. That reminds me, I must hoover a bit. By the way, where's little Nicky? Here he comes now. Excuse me, what exactly is going on? Who is that? That's our sound person, Winnie! <laughs> <laughs> no, Winnie, that's your name, Winnie Bell. No, oh, the Bell. All right, Winnie the Bell. I'll go and get one then. You <laughs> <laughs> see, Nick, now you see, that is comedy. <clears throat> we need a bell. Yeah, yeah. That is comedy. Yeah. Well, it's not exactly topical, is it? Yes, it is, Nick. We're celebrating the first daily news bulletin in Morse of the BBC Empire service 45 years ago. Whoa! Hey, we're bang up to date then, aren't we? So hey? let's relive the golden days of steam radio. Uh, what a brilliant idea, Clive. I tell you what, we could use these six cameras, some digital effects, computer graphics, and beam it round the world by satellite. Nick, you're missing the point. Oh, oh. Look, Nick, it's nearly three months since the BBC last had an anniversary. Yes, they really knew how to have anniversaries in those days. 50 years of nostalgia! The old camaraderie. The old spit and sawdust. Pie and mash after the shows. The old sing-song with a down and out in Piccadilly. But this is 1987. Sewing the blackout curtains. And when the bombing was over, we'd all gather around the old Joanna to sing. Ending, ending, and If you go down Lambeth Way, Sake. Oh, now I don't want anything to do with it. Honestly, all this nostalgic rubbish. Why is it the BBC always has to disappear off its own archives? Really? No, no, so, no sorry, cut it out. What's that? You just walked off in a huff. Oh, right. <laughs> I've got the bell! Oh, sorry, Winnie. Did Nick mess the sketch up? I can't do it. Hello, I'm a scientist. Now at last, the hard work has been taken out of vivisection and I can say goodbye to all my scalpels and knives. Because now, I have this. Robo-scientist. <laughs> With robo-scientist, my work is cut in half, or even smaller bits, if I like. <laughs> Whole rabbits chopped for perfect samples in three minutes. Three seconds. <laughs> in under two seconds. <laughs> and rats sliced for the fun of it in no time at all. <laughs> Robo-scientist with a choice of blades in three sizes. Gerbil, <laughs> monkey, <laughs> or cow. <laughs> With robo-scientist, blending is easy. And genetic engineering was never so much fun. Or so tasty. <laughs> robo-scientist, it's a bloody marvel. <laughs> At the moment, I'm up here on the roof of BBC Television Centre and waiting for something interesting to happen. Unfortunately, up here, public transport is so unreliable. In fact, you can wait in the cold for years for a flying saucer to come along, then suddenly, 
three come along at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> Let me get this straight. You got your, you got your multilateralist. Right. Now he says he's going to give up his bomb. But that actually means he's going to hang on to his bomb because he knows that nobody else will give up their bomb and that's the only reason he knew it was safe to say that he was going to give up his bomb in the first place. That's your multilateralist. That's right. Yes. And then you've got your unilateralist. Your unilateralist. Yes. And he's going to give up his bomb if the other side give up their bomb or not. That's your unilateralist. Yes. So come on, Clive. What are you, a multilateralist? Or a unilateralist. What? A multilateralist or a unilateralist? Hang on, I haven't even got a bomb! No, no. Eh? No, so get the multilateralist. <clears throat> uh, excuse me, I'm from the hospital. Have you any spare beds, by any chance? What? Uh, there are all emergencies. No, I'm sorry, we're three to bed as it is. Only right. three? There's plenty of rooms. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, 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 What with the Greenwich and Truro by-elections, the countdown to the general election has well and truly begun. So here's Nick with his up-to-the-minute analysis of the mood of the nation. Ah. <laughs> you are such a small man! Yes, OK, Stephen. Oh. Oh. There you are. And uh, that camera there. Oh. Well, if you ask me, that General Jaruzelski is a fat, lazy bastard with about as much charisma as a dead warthog. Great stuff, eh? And as for Lech Wałęsa, he could not fart his way out of a paper bag. <laughs> all this, Nick? Well, you said you wanted an opinionated poll. No, I said I wanted an opinion poll. <laughs> opinion poll. And as for our national football team, how they ever Thanks found on, their way to Warsaw Airport, let alone right. to Mexico? Right. Hey, Paul yeah. Oh, what oh, a oh, yeah. Man. You see, this is what happens if you don't speak up when you're talking. Honestly, I fly all the way to Poland. I've been round every blessed pub in Warsaw and Ealing. <laughs> Hello. The more observant among you have noticed, probably, that I'm no longer on the roof. <laughs> Good for you. Nice one. I'm here in the audience with my friends. And why not? People don't talk to each other anymore, do they? Nowadays, we only communicate by T-shirt messages. Joy, fun, Adidas. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever that stands for. <laughs> you know, in some circles, if you're not wearing a T-shirt message, people say, John's a bit quiet tonight. <laughs> Helen, what do you reckon on this? Are you a woman and unable to have children? Then look no further. Hmm? Don't get it. Yeah, but would you be interested? In what? Active man, five foot six, offers services as surrogate father. <laughs> yeah. Caring relationship, unnecessary, but good lookers preferred. It's unbelievable. Oh, bit of a bargain, eh? No, when did you read that? Well, I haven't sent it in yet. <laughs> it's you? Yeah, well, I rounded the height up a bit, you know. <laughs> you can't be a surrogate father, Nick. No, it's easy. But it's unethical. Oh, come off it, Helen. I'm not just in it for the money. No, yes, it is. It's unethical. It's nothing more than prostitution. Oh. Anyway, we want to sleep with you. Well, you know. Huh. Yeah, might as well go down the sperm bank. Sperm bank? <laughs> Where's your sense of romance, Helen? I'm offering a personal service here. Sperm bank. I'm not, anyway, I'm not on talk in terms of that place anymore. Why not, Nick? I found out they were seeing other men. <laughs> Fertility guaranteed, nine months warranty, labour not included. Good, eh? Where did you get this ridiculous idea from? The Pope. The Pope? The, the Pope said he was against surrogacy, Nick. No, 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 Helen, sorry, excuse me. He said he was against surrogate mothers. He didn't say anything about men. I found the loophole. <laughs> no. Oh, well. Womankind will never know what it missed. You know, I'm all in favour of surrogate mothers. If it's good enough for God, it's good enough for me. Order, 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 order. The normally sedate House of Commons tea room, which today was enlivened by vigorous debate. Mr Callaghan was relaxing with a cup of tea and reflecting on his controversial comments on Labour's defence policy. Mr. John Prescott, the Shadow Employment Secretary, firmly but politely put the party's case and reminded Mr. Callaghan of the impending election. 
Unfortunately, Mr. Ken Hines, the renowned Tory sneak, overheard everything. Mr. Callahan refused to be drawn further. <laughs> Never mind, mate. There's always 1992. <laughs> series started, my post back has been filled with letters asking me for advice about personal, emotional and sexual problems, needless to say. <laughs> now this one comes from a rather distressed young man in Winchester. He writes, Dear Helen, my problem is this. I'm in love with another woman. At a party when I was 16, I got very drunk as it was the first time I had had alcohol and I had just split up with my form teacher at school. <laughs> she was much younger than me and I was very confused. At the end of the party, a group of Hell's Angels started talking to me, and I lived with them in the New Forest for several years. <laughs> At first, I thought they were just friends, but one night, four of them crept into my tent. They got into my sleeping bag, and we kissed and cuddled for a while. Then they dressed me in a rubber French maid's costume, tied me to a Triumph Bonneville, and thrashed me with branches from an oak tree. <laughs> for a few months, it went no further. <laughs> Them told me he thought he might be bisexual and was worried in case his girlfriend found out. I didn't tell the others, but I did sleep with his girlfriend, who is much older and a horse. Please help me. <laughs> Am I normal? Well, crikey, sorry. Perverama. <laughs> no, sorry. Uh, look, look, um, no, it's, it's no use whinging about what's done. Anyway, yours is a very common problem. Uh, sometimes sexual revulsion comes from guilt that you've been brought up with, and sometimes from the fact that you're doing it with someone really ugly. But not always, Clive. Oh, sorry. Uh, but not always. Clive. <laughs> Here, Clive, I've got, I've got this great... Sorry, I've just had an apple out there. Oh. Um, I've got this great joke. Oh, well done, Nick. Do you want to do it with me? Well, yeah, great. Come on, look, I've got a little stage set up here. Oh. You're going to love this. <laughs> Can we have the comedy lighting, please? <laughs> right, you go. Ready? A bit nervous, don't worry. It's yeah. okay, it's fine. It's very, very funny. Right, Clive, what do you call the outside of a tree? I don't know. Bark, you idiot, bark. <laughs> oh, I see, yeah. No, no. <laughs> uh, woof, woof. A big pun? Woof, woof, the outside of a tree. Woof, woof. I thought you said it was bark. I did. <laughs> well, no, you just said it's woof, woof. No, sorry, I'd like you to say woof, woof. <laughs> oh, I see. Oh, no. <laughs> good, <man>. Why? <laughs> it's a joke. Oh, a joke. A joke, yeah, try it. Go on, try it. All right. Woof, woof. <laughs> well, it's not a very funny joke, if you don't understand. Uh, no, sorry, 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 I forgot. I, I, I have to do the first bit, and then it's a joke. Because right, it doesn't okay. make sense otherwise. Right, okay. Guy, <laughs> good about this. Guy, what do you call the outside of a tree? A joke! What? <laughs> a joke! <laughs> Clive, you don't know what it is. Look, I know what a joke is. Look, but, but you don't know what the outside of a tree is called. Yes, I do. You just told me it's a joke. <laughs> only if you, it's only a joke if you say woof woof. <laughs> woof 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 woof! I'm sorry, I still don't think it's that great a joke. Go on, Clive! I ask you, right, what do you call the outside of a tree? You say, I don't know you. And then just do what I tell you to do, all right, then it's a joke. Yes, but there's no need to ask me because I already know now. Just pretend you have a sense of that okay. joke. Okay, okay. Hi, <laughs> what do you call the outside of a tree? I have absolutely no idea. <laughs> bark, you idiot, bark. <laughs> Well, that's that sort of thing. No! No, Clark! Just bark! Yes, Nick, just bark! That's all the outside of a tree is, just bark! You don't understand, do you? I told you to do what I tell you to do! You did not tell me to do anything. I did! I told you to bark! You told me the outside of a tree is called bark. You didn't tell me to bark. <laughs> all right, all right. Look, if, if I ask you to bark, will you bark? Yes. Right, OK, right. You ready? Uh, Clive, what do you call the outside of a tree? Would you like me to bark now? I'm not asking you, am I? <laughs> I'm just listen, ask. Oh, okay, right, right. Clive, what do you call the outside of a tree? I don't know. Would you perhaps like to bark? I'd be delighted. Woof, <coughs> 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 woof. <laughs> no, it, it doesn't work like that, does it? Um, no, I'll tell you what, just bark of your own accord. I promise you, it's a great joke. Okay, right, we'll de definitely do it this one. Sorry, sorry to keep you waiting. It's good. All right. Clive, what do you call the outside of a tree? Woof, woof! No! <laughs> 
Christ! Oh, shut up! Oh, thank you. Forget it! I'm only trying to help. No, I know, I know, look. <laughs> you ask me, and I'll show you how it's Just ask me. Ask you what? What do you call the outside of a tree? I don't know! No! Ask me! Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, sorry. <laughs> yeah, right. Nick, yeah. what do you call the outside of a tree? I don't know. Bark, you idiot. Bark! Woof, woof! <laughs> yeah, well, you obviously gave the punchline away, didn't oh, I'm you? Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm not there again. I'm not... <laughs> it's Bernie, isn't it? Uh, Barry. Barry, sorry, sorry, <laughs> Barry. <laughs> oh, sorry, I was just making myself no, a cup of tea. Don't and... apologise, no problem. <laughs> um, why don't you come over here? I actually want to talk to you. Ah. I've been meaning to talk to you alone, actually, for some time, Barry. Yeah, well, the, the, the band would be worrying where oh, I am. Oh, no problem, just sit by me. No, thank you. No, here, Barry, here. <laughs> actually, you no, know, Barry, I've been thinking, um, the band's music isn't actually my cup of tea, you know. <laughs> Cup of tea. Very good. <laughs> yeah, I meant, um, I meant, but I like your drumming. I think it's very, very masculine, very, very dominant. Um, single? No chance. Not unless we can get a record company to put the money for one. No, 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 no I, I meant, um, are you married? I thought possibly we might be. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I'm not, I'm not married. Oh. No. <laughs> Mm. Do you like me doing this too, Barry? I've got a girlfriend, though. Oh, <laughs> what a shame. <laughs> yes. It is a shame. But the hospital says that if she keeps up her exercises, she'll soon be out of the wheelchair and onto her sticks. <laughs> Love you, Shirley. <laughs> Keep smiling. Barry, I'm so sorry. I had no idea. <laughs> I think you're really wonderful. I really do, really wonderful. <laughs> Ow! Oh, God, what are you doing? Now, was that a come on or what? <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry about that. Yes, it is true. Some men are just asking for it. <laughs> 1936, Spanish Civil War. My uncle Harry rushed to Sweden. No sense of direction. That's the kind of family I come from. <laughs> then he became a piano teacher for some years. One day he said to me, Arnold, I can't go on. I can't continue this. This is pointless. What can a human being teach a piano? <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Harry was a man of ideas. He began with socialism, drifted into Buddhism, and ended up with rheumatism. <laughs> We've all had our knees up doing the Lambeth walk. And you've all been down the strand and had a banana. <laughs> and now we, Bermuda Triangle, clear our cockney throats and from the Balfour at Bow, we hammer out a good old cockney ping pong. Here we go. Oh, if you're feeling lonely, if you're feeling blue, just jump on a bus, come along with us, pick a number 47 or a 22. Our doors are always open, we've thrown our way to key. Mind the gap, mind the gap. Barry, Bernie, Barry, Bernie, Barry, Barry, Bernie, Bernie, Barry, Bernie, Barry, Bernie. Barry. Bernie. Let's go. From the Isle of Dogs to Barking, you'll always see a smile. You can eat saveloys with the Dockland boys, go window shopping in the East End style. The world is full of violence, from Moscow to LA. But you never see a fight on a Saturday night, down White Chapel Way. Go, think the air of all that, been knocking on the end of my son. Nice one, tell, nice one, tell, the evening's just begun. All together now. Best 
lights in the world is called I'm a Londoner Oi, if you want pan ash and you're short of cash If you want jelly deals on a load of me wheels If you want a dead cert, have a word with Bert If you want a big marrow, there's one on me barrow If you want a kipper or a lunch time strum If no other stays in me, aren't you, mate? Are you looking at me or chewing a brick? Blazers. What do you mean a gig at Blazers? Well, more of an audition, really. Oh. Helen. But what about the last number? Sorry, right. Nick knows all about that. It's okay. What? what? Nick. Good luck, Ben. Cheers. Yeah. Cheers, mate. Hmm. Huh? Hmm. Huh? No, I've got the last number sorted. It's okay. Don't worry about it. Oh. Oh, good. They left the drum machine. Right. <clears throat> Uh, there's recently been some confusion about the exact status of refugees in the eyes of the British government. Well, here's a brief explanation. Immigration control, how's it done? Can we have our first immigrant, please? Ah. Ah, good evening, sir. And who are you? Oh, a Tamil. Oh, bad luck. <laughs> and tell us, what on earth possessed you to leave sunny Sri Lanka? Oppression? Torture and government troops hacking your family to bits. <laughs> and have you got the documents to prove it? You haven't. Have you got any of the bits? No. Well, I'm afraid, sir, if you want to claim refugee status in our country, you have to have valid documents to prove that you are a genuine victim of a repressive government. <coughs> How'd you get them? Well, from your government, of course. Yes, 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 we know you fled from them in the first place, but that's no problem. We'll just fly you back. Ha! So, not a very successful attempt to enter the country. But um, how could he have improved his chances? Well, it would have helped if he was South African. White South African. With plenty of money. Or, better still, if he'd had a skilled scientific background. Welcome to Great Britain, <laughs> Home Lieutenant Mayor. Oh, and don't forget your passport. <laughs> Mumtel Records present a classic collection. The golden one-liners of Arnold Brown. <laughs> yes, 16 of your all-time favorites on one unique album, including the immortal Why Not? Why Not? Why Not? <laughs> yes, the Glasgow gagster goes vinyl with That's the kind of person I am. It's true. That's the kind of person I am. That's the kind of person I am. <laughs> idiosyncratic party fun with someone's got to do it 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 <laughs> it used to be big in the 60s and who isn't a big deal and lots more yes they're all here the deathless one-liners that brought arnold brown into your heart Pick up the Arnold Brown album of Golden Gags now. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> it was a really bad night out, Ellen. Honest, honest, a really bad night. Well, what do you expect, Clive? I mean, you're seeing someone for the first time on a blind date. Where do you arrange to meet them? Outside a graveyard. <laughs> no, it's really beautiful, eh? Yeah, it might be in the daytime, Clive. But not in the middle of the night, miles from the nearest form of public transport with you turning up with a balaclava helmet on the wrong way round. Yeah, well, my nose gets cold in winter and as I cover it up, it goes bright red and scabby. It's like a torch. Well, at least they could have seen you coming then, instead of you looming up out of the dark like an axe murder in a particularly bad mood. And what were your first words to your prospective date? Boo. See? <laughs> very funny, Clive. Well, it's just a little joke to break the ice, that's all. I can't believe how insensitive you are. I mean, women are frightened to go out at night, let alone meet strange men outside graveyards. Yeah, well, I wasn't meeting a woman. I'm frightened of women. I thought if the agency introduced me to a few men first, I'd, I'd like, get the hang of it. <laughs> then move on to women later, you know? So that's if I've got this straight. 
So you arranged to meet a man at midnight outside a graveyard wearing a balaclava helmet on the wrong way round, and you can't understand why the date went badly. It was awful, Helen. You don't say, Clive. I had to pretend to be female. <laughs> why? Well, he turned out to be a particularly right-wing, blatant, mancunian, heterosexual police officer with a beard. <laughs> I wasn't taking any chances. Well, then... Um... How did you explain the balaclava helmet then, Clive? Well, I told him I was a recently married member of the royal family and I couldn't afford any unwanted publicity. Brilliant. I expect that went down really well. <laughs> went down well. I'd have beat him off with his truncheon. At least I think it was his truncheon. It was hard to tell in the dark. <laughs> what with that and the overexcited sniffer dog leaping on me from behind. Well, look, 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 look. At least it's all over now, Clive. At least you could forget it all. I wish I could. Helen. He's mad about me. <laughs> but I couldn't get away without promising to meet him again tonight. What are you going to do? Hey, OK, everybody. How do I look? Great, Nick, great. Dead sexy. <laughs> sexy, eh? Yeah. I've never been called sexy before. Right. <laughs> oh, she'll go balmy when she sees you, mate. Why? <laughs> <laughs> She's dressed up in a bit of the old fancy dress. Uh, Don't you worry about it. I won't, mate. Excuse I won't. Excuse me, Clive. <laughs> now, listen, Nick. Yeah. I know a little bit more about this than you think. Oh, don't you start, Helen. Honestly, I'm sick to death of your petty bourgeois attitude to sex. Now, if Clive happens to know a woman that's turned on by men wearing this kind of gear... Hey, <laughs> <laughs> what's wrong with me helping her express the burning desires of her sexuality, eh? Fine, Nick. I'm very sorry about my petty bourgeois attitude to hey, sex. Helen. Forget it, OK? No, 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 before you go. Yes, Helen. Now, look, um, sometimes women can be a little bit more demanding than men care to think. Well, um, I certainly hope so, Helen. I certainly hope so. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. <laughs> no, don't worry about me, Helen. I can look after myself, all right? Right, Clive? Right, Luke. Mm. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> oh, and, uh, Clive, I won't forget this. No, I don't expect you will, Nick. <laughs> In this world today, many people are having to go without their dinners. There is one reason for this, and one reason only. They do not own their own dinners. In this country, fortunately, we are blessed with an abundance of dinners. Our superbly efficient agricultural industry ensures that more and more people are owning not only their own dinners, but second dinners, third dinners, and even... Uh, multi-mega dinners. And it's all thanks to this government's policy of concentrating resources. Not on the dinnerless, but on the dinner holders, which attracts more dinner business and creates real dinner jobs. For too long, the politics of socialist envy imposed the stale old dogma of one man, one dinner. And look what happened. Winter of discontent. Used <laughs> to bury the dead. And shortages of dull, stodgy, state-controlled dinners. But now, all that's changed. We're no longer ashamed to get up and go for dinner, 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 dinner,
noticing that me and Elsa get to make idiots of ourselves and all you gotta do is press a button on a poxy drum machine! Well, I'm sorry, Clive. I have to disagree with you. I don't think Helen's making an idiot of herself at all. In fact, I think she's particularly good on that tambourine. Oh, thank you very much, Nick. Look at that! Two pounds of herbal sausages! Bless him! Yes, well, Clive, if you were reading your music properly, you'd be all right. I am reading the sodding music! Oh, what's your say, Clive? Just do your best, Clive. And, and? Uh, and, and don't hit the bongos too hard or your fingers will swell up like sausages. <laughs> Tonight on Newsnight, on the eve of the budget, we ask the question, if the country's doing so well, how come the Chancellor can't afford a new briefcase? 